Another big thing that was happening in theaters in the 90s was it was an actual annual animated short film festival called the Spike and Mike Sick and Twisted um, Film Festival, which launched in 1990. This was another place where, again, all bets were off. You could really see experimental filmmaking at its finest. Um, and it, it lived up to its name. It really was some sick and twisted stuff. Um, some notable people who came out of this um, are Craig McCracken, who years later created the Powerpuff Girls, um, John Lasseter, who became the guy at Pixar and Disney, um, who made his first huge success by directing the very first Toy Story, later in his career, obviously, um, and Matt Stone and Trey Parker, who years later would create South Park. In fact, the original South Park Christmas holiday special was actually shown at this festival. Um, I don't know if you know, just really quickly, the, the, the way South Park even came about is they were asked, they were at Fox at the time, and they were like just, I think, interns, and they were working, and they were asked to make a, a, kind, of like, kind of like a holiday card for the studio, and they said, well, can we make an animated short film? Uh, we can mail that out, like physically mail it out on VHS, on, you know, half-inch VHS cassette tapes, and that would be a Christmas card. And I go, sure. So they made this, this short, um, which... I don't even know how to, I think it was just called the South Park Holiday Special or Holiday Card or something. And um, it, uh, you know, and this, is an, and, and this is before, obviously, the internet, and, but it went viral in the sense where people were duplicating a VHS tape because it was so funny and literally passing it around town. In fact, I think there's a story about how George Clooney actually got it and actually kind of made it famous because he called the studio and he goes, wait, what was that holiday card you mailed us? That was hilarious. And it helped garner a lot of attention because George Clooney was kind of backing up this holiday card and giving it to his friends. Anyway, that was the original version of South Park, and uh, it it had its uh, its 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 theatrical debut, I think, at the Spike and Mike um, Second Twisted Film Festival. Okay, now back to Disney. Disney had 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 a boom time in the '90s. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, 1991; Aladdin, 1992; The Lion King, 1994. Uh, which successfully broke op box office records, all of those. Uh, Pocahontas, uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, 96, Hercules, 97, Mulan, 98, Tarzan, 99. All these grossed over $250 million worldwide. The films of this period are regarded as, as part of Disney's renaissance. A big part of it was due to a man named Christopher Vogler. In fact, there was a great book uh, that he wrote called The Writer's Journey, um, mythic structure for writers. If any of you writers out there, any, anybody really into storytelling, I urge you to get this book. Um, it's a popular screenwriting textbook by um, Christopher Vogler, focusing on the theory that most stories can be boiled down to a series of narrative structures and chapter archetypes described through mythological allegory based on the writings of, mytho of, of uh, mythologist Joseph Campbell and his book, specifically The Hero with a Thousand Faces. So that book basically says that all stories uh, innately adhere to very specific principles, a very specific formula in which a hero follows. He meets, he meets, he meets uh, allies and foes, shapeshifters, wizards. Uh, it's what George Lucas based Star Wars on, the George Campbell book. And it's basically what Disney suddenly was looking at as their Bible um, for um, how they were going to create stories. So a huge part of what became the boom of, um, of, of storytelling at Disney and why I think those stories have really resonated with us for so many years, it's because it, it follows this very simple kind of formula that Joseph Campbell basically said that all mythologies follow, which thus why they all have still lived with us for so long. Um, okay, now back to ridiculous cartoons. Um, John... Uh, Crick Falusi's influential show, The Ren and Stimpy Show, which ran from 91 to 95, garnered widespread acclaim. For a while, it was the most popular cable TV show in the U.S. Uh, programmed as a children's cartoon, it was notori notoriously controversial. It was dark, a lot of dark humor, um, sexual innuendos and adult jokes, a lot, of shock, a lot of shock value, but it was you know, very, a very poignant, I think, kind of show and very, very much what was happening to sum up the 90s in a perfect one show kind of um, uh, box. The enormous hit, the enormous two hits of The Simpsons and The Ren and Stimpy Show promoted more original, relatively daring series to come out, including South Park, which aired in 1997, King of the Hill, which ran from 97 to 2010, 
Family Guy, it's been on since 99, and one of my favorites, Futurama, which only had a four-year run, 99 to 2003. After the success of Pixar's Toy Story, the very first Pixar film, came out in 95, computer animation grew into the dominant animated technique world in the U.S. and many other countries that it's still known um, you know, for doing today. Even, uh, even animation that looked traditional was more and more often created with, full, with, 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 with computers. Like even today, South Park is done computer, computer, purely in Maya, you know, com uh, uh, computer um, um, animation software. But it looks ideally still like stop motion. Uh, the Lego movies, all, all the Lego movies that look stop motion are all done computerly, uh, purely um, on a computer. But they have that kind of rawness that they can mimic that looks like traditional old school animation. So around this time, Disney started to, to produce their own 3D style computer animated films like Lilo and Stitch 2002, Treasure Planet 2002, Brother Bear 2003, but they weren't really living up to the bar that Pixar had created. And at this point, Pixar had already released Toy Story 2, Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles. Uh, they were obviously dominating. So to turn things around, Disney did what Disney does. They bought Pixar. Uh, in 2006 and put creative control um, over Pixar and Walt Disney Studios in the hands of Pixar's John Lasseter as part of the deal. Um, the studios would, would run kind of independent studios, but still Lasseter uh, would be the Disney, um, would be under kind of the head and um, he developed both the, the traditional style for some, for more Disney stuff and more uh, computer 3D stuff for all the Pixar stuff. On TV, the big thing that was going on was Adult Swim. Adult Swim um, is actually it actually comes from Cartoon Network, which is basically an adult-oriented version, adult nighttime programming block of the famous children's cartoon uh, cable show, Cartoon uh, Cable Network, Cartoon Network. It is uh, it's programmed basically in-house. It started out by this in-house production company called called William Street, and it currently broadcasts from about eight till six p.m. eight p.m. till six a.m. Um, um, still and it launched in 2001. So by day, kids can watch Powerpuff Girls, and by night, they can watch things like, like, uh, like Aqua Teen Hunger Force, which is still one of my still favorite things ever. Okay, so now let's get into stop motion. Ardman Studios is a British animated studio based in Bristol. Ardman is known for films made using stop motion claymation techniques, particularly, particularly those using plasticine. In 1991, one of their animators, Nick Park, uh, made a short film called Creature, Key, Creature Comforts and was, was the very first Ardman production to win an Academy Award. Park also developed clay, clay model shorts featuring the adventures of Wallace and Gromit. Here is Nick Park's Oscar-winning short film, Creature Comforts. <laughs> 